Hi everybody, welcome back. It's been a long week, hasn't it? it uh, it's felt like eons since my last live stream, but I'm excited to uh, show you some things. As usual, please feel free to use uh, the chat window uh, to say hi, let me know who you are, ask some questions, just whatever you want, um, keep in the chat window. Uh, just keep it friendly. We're all composer friends here. Um, so yeah, let me just get started here and then um, we'll get to the good stuff, the note flight stuff. Okay, so we are back to being set up on note flight. I'm gonna actually go through and show you how to start a piece again because I feel like we can't we can't learn enough times how to start a piece. Um, so I'm just gonna go here and create a score up here in this upper left-hand corner. Boop, create. There we go. Um, for the sake of this class, I'm just going to do a piano score. Um, I have some pretty devastating news that I can't find where I saved ramen noodle. So, uh, rest in peace. My first note flight live stream piece ramen noodle. Um, yeah, just, uh, maybe we'll come back and we'll, we'll redo ramen noodle. Who knows? Um, but for now I had, uh, someone asking me how to use a keyboard to transcribe music onto note flight. And I was going to make a whole video about this, but, um, I figured that I just kind of start my live stream from here. Um, I find that using MIDI or using a keyboard or an instrument as input for uh, like musical content is really tricky. So this is like, if you've ever been skiing, this is not a green slope, this is not a blue slope, this is a double black diamond. Like proceed with caution. Um, I'm not gonna say don't do it, but it does have a lot of problems with it and I'm gonna show you why. Um, so to transcribe, you go up to this button called transcribe. Now I have this hooked up to my little MIDI keyboard. Um, and I'm just gonna do that here. I'm just gonna do that like little lick for um, Billie Eilish's bad guy, just cause I know it. I'm really bad at piano, so please be um, kind to me through this. Now, one thing you really, really wanna do is make sure that you have your metronome on. If you don't have your metronome on, you're going to be in a world of complication. So make sure that you, if you do wanna do this, have your metronome on. It's going to save you a lot of trouble. Um, now, I'm gonna kinda of show you why it's really hard to do this. Keep in mind that I, I work to a metronome a lot. I do a lot of recorded music. So um, I a lot of times will play guitar to a, a, what we call a click track, so a metronome track. Um, and I do that a lot for stuff. Um, and it's still hard. I've been doing this for a long time and it's still hard and I still make a lot of mistakes. Um, so just keep in mind that it's, it's a tricky thing to play to a click track. Um, I'm just gonna kind of show you why I think inputting to MIDI is really hard. Hopefully my point will be illustrated just by doing it. So I get that. Oh, well I messed up, but anyway, there you go. So darn, okay, this is what I thought. Because I'm very used to playing in a class, click track um it came out pretty it came out right but so but let me play it back let me play it badly and not really listen to the click track um okay let's see if i can just record over this so i'll just kind of not really pay attention to the metronome as much So, okay, there we go. And now we have this mess. 
because I wasn't playing super accurately, we have this mess of notation going on and that's no fun to clean up. It's almost better to just input it because you know where those notes are going and it's kind of a fun exercise to think about rhythms and think about how to put them down. So, you know, MIDI is a fun tool to use, but it's really not great for transcribing because it it's if you get one measure off, if you get one beat off, your whole your whole transcription is going to be messed up from there on out. It's just really hard to control unless you work with a click track constantly like I do. Um, so like double black diamond, huge caution, but I did want to show you how to do that in case that's what you really want to learn how to do. Um, okay, so let's go back to some normal things. I'm going to delete this whole thing. Um, open up the chat section for questions on how to use NoteFlight, but let's remember our favorite tool, which is the big old select tool. I'm going to select the first measure, this first beat. I'm going to press shift, and then I'm going to press the last beat, and I'm going to delete that whole mess. Just, just be gone. Okay. All right. Let me change this window just so I can see our chats. Um, where, where did my chat window go? There we go. Hello. Okay, great. <sighs> okay. Hello, everyone. All right. How to record. See, I just kind of um, showed, so if you like scroll back a little bit, I'll show you how to transcribe things, but NoteFlight doesn't have a really great recording option. Um, it's not a good place if you if you want to learn how to record things definitely reach out to me i'm happy to walk you through like learning how to use GarageBand or audacity or like some sort of recording software but i wouldn't really use note flight for recording it's just um it's not really built built for that right it's built for notation so um we use it for notation okay everyone do we have any questions? I see you all are here doing good, thinking about memes and talking about being bored during online classes. Hopefully this will be less boring. How can I make it less boring? Can I like, um, if you guys aren't asking any questions, maybe I'll just see what happens when I put my whole arm on my keyboard and press transcribe, right? That's a good idea. That's fun. Right. But you know what I do need here? If I'm going to press my whole arm down on my MIDI keyboard, I'm going to need a grand staff, right? Okay, so we have our bass clef here, but we're going to need that full grand staff because I want all the notes I can get. Uh, if I'm gonna put my whole arm on it, see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna go here up to this parts, which is the nice guitar icon. And I'm gonna add a whole new piano part because, because I just kind of, um, see, I messed it up a little bit. So I'm gonna delete this upper piano part and look, we have our grand staff again. And if, um, for all you uh, VYC bridge people, we know we never, ever, ever, ever start with quarter note equals 120. What do we wanna change it to? Any ideas? First one I see. Okay, so I am going to change it to, I'm just gonna change it to 125, why not? Okay, I see the question about how to connect a MIDI device. I will show you how to do that. It is complicated and like I said, I'm really gonna caution against using MIDI to input something. Oh, 121, thanks Gil, I'll do 121. That's what we wanna do. Okay, so like I said, Inputting with MIDI is really not something that I recommend unless you are so used to working with a metronome that you could do it in your sleep. Um, definitely like try it out, but it will often create a lot more headache um, than it's worth. Uh, but, and the practice of notation, like I got good at notation, not by inputting things on a keyboard that I liked. I got really good at notation, which is, the language that a lot of composers use to communicate, I got really good at it just by playing around and messing up a lot, you know, transcribing my favorite songs and 
getting them wrong and then getting them right and being like, wow, I finally am getting it. And I've been doing this for a lot of years and no, I look 19, I am not 19. Um, I've been doing this professionally for like five years and I'm gonna tell you right now, I still sometimes I'm like, wow, I'm terrible at notation. And then I just keep practicing and keep practicing and I'm like, wow, I'm actually much, much better. So please don't use MIDI for an input unless you really want to try and experiment with it. It's I, I'd really much rather see you guys try the act of notation because sometimes you just get more creative when you're using notation. Um, I'm going to tell a very brief story. Very brief story. Don't let me ramble, but very brief story about... One of my first compositions ever uh, was supposed to be a solo cello piece in college. And um, I was the student of a teacher that I really admired. Like I really wanted to be like her when I grew up. So I was like, put a ton of pressure on myself to make just the best and coolest, most innovative cello piece I could do. And I just, I was playing piano and I just couldn't think, I just thought of the most sort of basic things I could think of and I just kept feeling like she wasn't gonna like that basic thing. So I procrastinated and procrastinated and procrastinated until the night before the assignment was due. And um, I ended up just like totally having a breakdown, crying and writing this cello piece that was like the lowest note and then the highest note and it was just crazy. It was just like total mess of notation. And my teacher ended up loving it. Like she thought it was one of the coolest things she's ever seen. And I don't think I wouldn't, I don't think I would have ever gotten to that point of writing something really cool if I just played something that I knew on a piano. So try the act of notation. It's really fun. Okay, a lot of questions about uh, MIDI devices. So a MIDI device, M-I-D-I, I am definitely not the expert on this, and Helica is much, much better than I, but it's basically, um, it's basically how a computer understands notation. So you can play a little keyboard over here. I have my little keyboard out of the frame. Uh, you can play a keyboard or you can play, I have my guitar down here, you can play guitar, and it will input kind of the notes. And um, it then will show up notation, but it's a really hard and finicky thing to be really good at. It's, um, it's something that just takes a lot of practice. Um, so just be cautious going forward. Okay. Um, how do you connect a MIDI device? So my MIDI device just has like a regular USB connection. I'm going to unplug it. It looks like this. I just have regular USB and I just connect it there. To use MIDI properly in note flight, you have to be using Chrome. That's one important thing. It'll give you an error message if you're using Safari or anything else, but Chrome is what I use and, and it should just come up. If you press transcribe and then do it, it should work for you. There was another question about using a way to use a keyboard without a metronome. That's a very interesting question um, because you can use it without a metronome, but if you are using MIDI to input, or if you're using a keyboard to input, you're gonna want a metronome. It's gonna make your life so much easier. Um, but basically the metronome button is up here. Uh, it's this little old fashioned metronome. Um, my cursor is circling around it. And mine you can see is highlighted in white. And if I just unclick it, then the metronome is off and see, let's see what's happening. You can't hear a MIDI metronome. Uh, now I'm kinda lost. Right? So it's it's even worse, right? Like I had no idea where I was starting. Um, so use a met so you know, uh, just use that metronome. It's it's there to it's there to help you um, if you do want to use this method, which like I said is double black diamond status. It's kind of um, it's just not ideal right now. Yeah, if you want to try it, go for it. Just um, you know, go for it. Certainly make sure here's the three big things you have to do. One, you have to make sure that you are using Chrome as your browser. So Google Chrome as your browser. 
And then two, you have to make sure that you have a keyboard that connects using a USB to your computer, okay? And then three, you have to make sure that you turn on your metronome. That is gonna help you. So go forward, try it, see what you get. But like I said, you might really surprise yourself with what you come up with from your brain rather than from what you hear. Re really, it, you will be shocked at what you can create from your mind. How do you roll a chord between two hands? Interesting question. Um, oh, I'm getting a bunch of questions right now. They're all just coming in. Okay, how do you change a specific section of notes? Okay, so let's like write a section of notes right here. Um, I have to get into edit mode. I'm just gonna do some. Something like that. Um, fun little modal thing. Um, so let's listen to that. Right? Okay, so how do I change this specific section of notes? Um, if you wanna change one note, you just click on the note head you want to use. Um, sorry, you have to click stop. You have to click on the note head you want to use and then raise it or lower it using um, your directional keypad on your keyboard. These are things that I covered in my three intro tutorial videos, which you should definitely watch. They're very helpful, very fast, and you can literally go, like I typed out the numbers or the, the minute markings of where you can go to find exactly what you want to know. So it's really helpful, it's really fast, I promise it won't take a lot of time. Anyway, say I wanted to change this note and put it up a little bit higher. Um, so all I would do is I would use my directional keypad, so the arrows, and I would press up, up, up to change that note and press down, down, down to change that note to go down. Cool, pretty easy. Say I wanted to change, say, these three notes and I wanted to raise all of these by a third. What I would do is I would press the first note and then click shift on my keyboard, shift, and press this D and that selects all of those three notes. Now I wanted to raise all of them. I would just press up, 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 to raise all of those by a third. Pretty cool, huh? You can just do a lot kind of by using shift, click, and the directional keypad. You can just kind of play around with a lot of things. Let's listen to it, why not? Cool, neat. All right, let's look at some more questions. How do you roll a chord between two hands? I will show you how to do that. Oh, if you only have a USB-C, you have to, and I only have a USB-C. Um, I can't really unplug it right now. Well, you know what? I am gonna unplug it. Okay, so I just, uh, I have this little device. It's a USB-C end, and it connects to all these USB, USB outlets. So, um, I just plug that into my USB-C and then I can still plug in to my MIDI keyboard or my microphone or whatever I want to use. Um, cool. Um, yes, yes, Gil, you do use an adapter. Um, just showed you that right there. You can buy them on Amazon pretty easily or your parents might have one around. I'm not really sure. Um, is there a cord that connects the device to the laptop? Yes. The cord, you you have to kind of know that you're buying a keyboard that can transfer to a computer. A lot of them can. Um, it's very rare to not, but obviously like a stand-up piano does not work. But I just have, you know, like my MIDI keyboard connects using one of these guys. And then I connect to um, my USB adapter. Anyway, but I really don't want to answer more questions about MIDI input because we are here for notation and uh, NoteFlight is a notation software. If you want to learn how to record, chat with me and I can totally teach you that, but I do want to focus on notation because like I said, notation is like a totally different game. You can come up with things that you could never even imagine on a keyboard in notation. So it's your friend, it's, it's, a whole new frontier, yeah. 
Does this work with Android? Um, if you're using, I cannot imagine using MIDI input on a, like on a tablet or um, phone. Like I just, I really just don't feel like that is possible and I don't really have the expertise to say. So. Cool. Um, great. Okay, cool. So now you all know how to connect your devices, even though I'm telling you that it's double black diamond and you should not do it. Um, okay. So I was having, oh, Larissa asked, how do I roll a chord between two hands? Okay. So perfect example. Let me, um, let me make like a huge gigantic chord here. Okay. Just something that's just pretty crazy. So I'm going to select this first note and then I'm just going to kind of pile all these and only add that one. These notes on top by kind of like clicking and then re-clicking so this phantom note appears. So, okay. And then at the same time this is happening, I'm really just choosing notes at random here because random is kind of fun sometimes. Um, I don't know. And then that one. Cool, that looks cool. All right, so this chord is wildly unplayable by a piano player and would have to be rolled. It would actually be a pretty wild roll, but uh, we'll play it anyway. Let's get rid of this so we can just hear this. All right, so I'm gonna click, click play. Wild chord, let's have this, let's have this hold, held out a little longer. I'm gonna click the first note and I'm gonna click the note way down here so it selects the whole chord. And I'm going to go up here to duration and change it to a whole note. Oh, I see the bottom staff didn't do that. Sometimes it, it only works staff by staff, so you have to kind of reselect. But anyway, great. So we have that lasting, all of those, uh, that whole measure. And because it's a, uh, a gigantic chord, you have to roll it. You can't just, I don't have enough fingers to play that whole thing. Um, so see, there's six here. I, I just can't play that with a hand. So it would have to be rolled like, da -da 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 -da. I don't play piano. So um, excuse me for being really silly, but you have to kind of, the one thing you do have to decide is whether you want it rolled up or rolled down. Rolling up means starting from the bottom note and going all the way up to the top note. And then rolling down means starting from the top note and rolling all the way down to the bottom. So you have to make that decision whether you are rolling up or rolling down and they sound different. So I'm gonna say that for this, I want it to roll down. So I'm gonna click that first note and I'm going to click the last note. So I select the whole chord. And remember that when I'm clicking these, I click this note and then I press shift to select the whole thing. All right, so now if I wanna find a roll, I don't see it up here in my dock. So I'm gonna go down, go to these uh, three bars here where there's other things to add to my little control dock. I don't know what the control dock is called. I'm just calling it that. Okay, so down, down, down. I haven't seen it yet. Hmm, might be, it's here, I've seen it. It is here, I have seen it for myself. All right, wave it. Hmm. See, sometimes you just gotta, okay. So the way you do it is with this arpeggio. So I know arpeggio is not exactly what we're calling a roll, but it, it is an arpeggio in sort of a, in like an unmetered way. So um, I'm gonna go to these three lines, scroll all the way down to ornament, which is any little flourish on a note. You can see in ornament, you can find a trill, a glissando, and then these other things, but you're gonna to wanna to click arpeggio, and that will show them that they want to roll that chord. Now this, if you don't provide any sort of idea of whether you want it rolled up or rolled down, it will most likely be rolled um, from the bottom up. So we say rolled up. But 
If you want to specify that I want it rolled down, starting from the top all the way down, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a little, um, I'm gonna add up an arrow, which I'm pretty sure I can do. And if I can't do, we'll figure out another way. Hmm. This is for tab scores, but I bet we could use this here. Let's try that again by pressing shift and selecting the whole thing. Let's just try, see if, oh goodness. See, there's where I created an error for myself. We are all learning this software. I'm pretty good at it, but sometimes I make mistakes. There are things that I've never done before. And whenever I make a mistake and I'm like, goodness, I do not know how to get out of this mess. I, I will always do my favorite trick, which is Command Z, which is the undo key. Uh, on a Mac or on a, um, a PC, it should be something like Control or, um, or Option Z. Uh, Z as in zebra, and that will help you. Um, so I'm not seeing anything like a rolling, an indication to roll down. So in that case, you got to get creative. You just, that's just what you got to do. You get creative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in, um, I'm going to write that in. And that's what you can always do if you really don't know how to do something and you're like, I want this really specific thing, but I can't find the notation for it. You just got to write it in. So I'm going to write in text. I'm going to write performance text and I'm going to say roll down. And that's what you do. Pretty cool, huh? We're getting creative and we are thrifty problem solvers up here at BYC Bridge. All right, I have a bunch more questions. All right. Hmm, okay. So we love the, the amazing Control Z, Command Z, it's amazing. Congratulations on finishing your piece. Uh, it's always a good um, day. In the world of composers, we call that sometimes double barring because at the end of the piece, we got a double bar. So congratulations on your double bar. Go celebrate by taking a walk six foot feet away from other people. Um, okay, so um, all right. If you are writing for piano, can I continue the melody in the next hand? Absolutely you can. If you are here, let's create a little melody. All right, this mess of a chord and then I'm doing the exact same thing that I did before, so let's do this. So, I'm just making a melody up. I'm just making a melody up. I don't really have any, uh, it's not my favorite melody, but it's a melody. Cool melody. So that is starting in the piano player's, um, left hand, sorry. <laughs> so that's starting in the piano player's left hand. If you wanted to um, have that player play it in their right hand as well, you could even do kind of like a canon thing. Let's do something like that. So what I would do is I would select the first note, press shift to select the whole phrase and press the last note. That selects the whole phrase. That's your best friend in note flight. And then I'm gonna press command C to copy it and let's say I want that to begin the next measure. So I'm going to click this measure five. The melody started in measure four. I want it now in measure five, and I'm gonna press Command V to paste. Um, but now you can see that it's in the same octave as before. And if it were in the same octave, I kind of imagine that the piano player would just play it with the same hand. So you have to think about it. Think about how you would be there playing it, even if you put it in the staff that is normally reserved for um, the right hand, if it's in the same octave as the previous melody, they're probably just gonna play it with their left hand. So, so really just think through these moments if you want it to be played in different hands, okay? So I'm gonna um, bring this up. Oh geez, I could do it here or we can do it up here. Okay, so let's hear what that sounds like. 
I'm sure it's not my best work, but it's interesting. Okay, it's not so bad. See what you can create when you don't use a keyboard? I couldn't have come up with that if I uh, just been pl plunking things that sound good on my keyboard. I just kind of invented that because I like the shape. Just saying that sometimes notation is, is really fun and helpful. Okay, cool. So now I have these in both hands. Uh, does that make sense, Larissa? If not, uh, just feel free to give me, um, give me, an, send me an email or something like that. Cool. If I'm writing for my electric guitar, how can you use amplifiers? Oh my God. Okay, that's like a huge question. We can totally talk about that later. But most electric, so for context, for you, those who don't know me, I'm mostly a guitarist and singer. I play in a bunch of bands and that's sort of, um, you know, I'm a composer first, but uh, I play in a lot of bands. I play electric guitar a lot. So um, when you are writing for electric guitar, it's implied that they are using amplifiers. Um, a guitar, an electric guitar without an amplifier um, doesn't really sound good. Like you just can't hear that. You, you need um, an amplifier to hear this instrument. So if you wanted to use electric guitar in anything you're writing, it's implied that um, the guitarist will be using an amplifier. If you want to specify the amplifier, if you're like, gosh, I really want them to use, I'm just going to say the amplifier I have, which is a Vox um, A150, which is like a really cool amplifier that they used a bunch in uh, the UK in like the 1960s and 70s, like the Rolling Stones made it really famous. Um, so if you wanted to use a really specific amplifier, you would just kind of on the front page, you would kind of give like a a disclaimer and saying like, I would like you to use this amplifier or this effect pedal or something like that. It's, um, you know, it's always really, really important to just specify what you want if you have a specific sound in mind. Okay. So Lucy asked, is there a way to write from multiple instruments at one time? So do you mean like if you want to write a melody that goes in all of the instruments at the same time and just like if you wrote one line that it would just appear in all of the other staves is that what you're asking because if that's what you're asking there is no way to do that it is you have to go in and press and um just kind of do it manually but I will show you how I would do it just to make sure. So say I really, let's make a really crazy melody. Let's get wild and crazy here, okay. There's my new melody. Okay, cool, great. There's my really wild and crazy melody that I thought of without using an instrument because my brain couldn't come couldn't have come up with it in an instrument. Um, so what I'm going to do, and I want to add this to a bunch of instruments. Say I'm writing, this is a piano. Say I'm writing a much bigger piece than that. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's go up to score and um, parts. We all know how to add more parts. If you don't, check out my first video that I made on YouTube. Jessica Mays sent it out. It is very easily accessible through my YouTube page but it is the best place to find um, sort of like anything, anything very standard about note flight is in there. So um, I'm gonna add a bunch of parts here. Let's give it a double bass and um, I don't know, a trombone. These are, it's funny, these are all, all people I know play double bass and trombone. Um, what else? Ooh. A guiro. Let's do that. Um, okay, what else could I do? Plucked strings? Let's do electric guitar because I, oh, Les Paul. That's what I have, so I'm going to do Les Paul. Okay, so now we have a bunch of instruments. Cool, right? Great. 
So this is in the wrong order. I would not recommend this order. I'm not gonna reorder it just for time's sake. But say I wanted this to happen in every single instrument. What I would do is I would click the first note of that melody, click it so it turns orange, press shift, and click the last note of that melody. That will select the whole passage. Now I'm going to press Command C um, on a Windows computer. I believe that it's Option C or Control C, but anything that's doing a copy function, and I'm going to paste it into all the instruments by pressing the first measure and pressing Command V. Uh, now look at that, because that's how the bass works. So I'm just going to lower it a few octaves, right, by using my directional keypad, which is the arrows, the arrow keys. I lower that down um, into a nice octave for it. Kind of. I don't think they'd love me, but... And then um, trombone, see it's high once again, so let's bring it down there. That might get kind of complicated for these instruments, but let's just, let's just see what happens. And then that's kind of playable on the guitar, so yeah. All right, so let's play it. So what I did there was I just copied this first phrase and then I pasted it into each part, making sure that I was thinking about the octave that it was in. Because this was written in treble clef, when I, when I put it down here, it still maintained that pitch, but with all those ledger lines and then, you know, um, it was unplayable for those instruments. So I lowered it using my directional or arrow keypads to lower that pitch. Let's, so that it put in the uh, right octave. Let's just play that. Cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, but how cool is that? And I could not have come up with that on one of these or on my keyboard. I just came up with that because I wanted to do something crazy and I figured out how to do it. Okay, some more questions. So that's how I e-rigger multiple instruments at one time. On paper? Hmm. Okay, if you wanted to use any certain pedals in electric guitar, um, we can talk about that. Um, Lucia, we are going to talk later and I will talk to you about using pedals in electric guitar pieces. But yeah. Anyway, so do we like, right, Gil, it's cool, come on. Would, you would not have come up with that if I put a piano in front of you, right? I came up with that because I was just like, Let's throw stuff on a page, why not? Um, so like I'm urging you guys, this is, this is if any time in the world to write down the craziest things you can think of and, and just like really have no shame about writing something that might sound bad. Like this, now is the time to do it when you're playing around in Note Flight. Um, Note Flight, it just offers so much more diversity and flexibility and just you can do anything with notation if you just kind of if you just try it so now is the time to just try it this what i wrote here was not an ordinary melody and i put very little thought into it but i just said i want to see these crazy leaps in all these instruments and it sounded really cool so yeah Oh, everyone likes my weird piece that I came up with no thought whatsoever. You guys can come up with better stuff if you put some thought into it, I promise. Uh, maybe I'll use that in a piece. It's kind of cool. <laughs> um, I think we like the Les Paul sound. Ooh, this is a good question. Can you work on one piece with many people if you are working with someone else? Yes, you can. So I'm, I'm actually a little confused about the question. Either are you working on one piece like with many people as in you're collaborating on a piece? If so, Note Flight is an awesome place to do that. If you go up to score details and you, uh, so untitled. What should we call our piece? I'm waiting. I will take the first response I get. What do we call this piece? Um, 
but for now I'm just going to show you where to share it. So if you go down here and share, um, you can click that and then share score. So I got there by going to score details. That's where you're going to find anything about like where it's shared and what the name is. Um, okay, we're calling the piece Corgi. Oh, we love a Corgi. Great. Corgi. Um, okay, so if I want to share the score, um, you go to share score and then you can share it with a bunch of different individuals. So that is where you would share it with anyone in your group and they can all access the score. If you're used to using Google Drive or Google Docs or Google Sheets or whatever, um, it, this is the same idea. It's just for notation, which is super cool. And now that we are so socially distant, we should be using this super cool time to write stuff together from a distance and collaborate on stuff. Actually, if everyone in the chat writes down their NoteFlight username, I will share this piece with you and I'm going to challenge you to not, number one, not use a MIDI keyboard and using this instrumentation, finish whatever is on the page with the craziest thing you can think of. Just, just throw it out there. I want to see what you guys come up with. So like, let's write, let's make Corgi be a collaborative piece. We're starting with whatever I, <laughs> I've started this piece with and we're going to go forward and we are going to make the craziest quarantine collaborative piece. So if you want to join in on this project, just tell me whatever your username is um, and I'll share it with you and we can all do a collaborative piece. Okay, so if you are confused about where to find your username, you just click this sort of face icon. I think you can add a picture. Maybe I will add. I actually like came up with my own, like I made this a few days ago. It's like my little icon that I'm using for like uh, to show people who I am on the internet. Um, so maybe I'll put that there. But if you click on this, it'll say just, you know, it'll say your name up here and that's your username. <gasps> so many people who are gonna join my cool piece. Okay, so the rules are that you are not allowed to use a MIDI input. You have to come up with this from your own brain and you can't put too much thought into it. I just want you to come up with the craziest thing you can think of for this already crazy piece. All right, I will add you all. Um, I will add you all at the end of this, okay? All right, do we have any more questions? We have about 20 minutes left. Oh, I see a really important question, lyrics. All right, so to continue with the theme of this piece being the wackiest thing I've ever written, um, I am going to add a vocal line. Uh, I'm going to add a vocal line above this. Once, once I leave this chat, I'm going to organize this so it looks a little bit nicer. Um, but here, let's add a vocal line. How I, I have to do that because I didn't add a voice in this um, is I'm going to go up here to parts. I'm going to add another part. You all know how to do parts now, and if you don't, like I said, go look at my earlier YouTube videos. There's a playlist on like getting started with NoteFly. I'm just gonna press voice. I like just the plain voice because I just like the plain voice. I don't know why, but I really just like saying voice because a voice is a voice even if it's higher or lower, you know? You know? Okay, so. Now I added the voice. I want it to come up here because voice, voice is generally on top. All right, so after this, so with this long note, I want to add some text and some lyrics. So I'm going to do something kind of silly. I'm going to add another measure at the end by pressing measure and then this plus sign, which adds a measure. And then because a ton of people were asking me about triplets, I'm going to show you how to input a triplet. Um, for any inputting of triplets, you have to really be cautious about the length that you want the triplets to last. 
not the length of one individual triplet, but the whole bar itself. So if I wanted a triplet measure of quarter notes, I would make sure to turn this into a half note because then that will split up the phrase. So think about it like this. Uh, you have to you have to kind of think about each measure as they go, or each. This is <laughs> hard thing to think about um, notationally, but what? So you have to say kind of like if we're in this bar of four four, right? Cool. And I want it to be like triple it. That lasts two beats. Da da da. So I have to say, I want this triplet to last these three, these two beats, right? If I wanted a short triplet like triplet like da 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 then I would uh then I would select it for a quarter note. And then that would be da 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 right? Okay, cool. So I want da da da. I'm going so I'm gonna do a half note. Sorry if that's very um, not clear. Um, hopefully I'll find like an article to read on putting triplets in note flight. Um, I'm just not good at articulating it, I think. Anyway, so you go to rhythm and you head down to triplet. And I'm going to write and I'm gonna write V Y, C, cool. So how I did that was, I'm gonna put in, make sure that uh, I have all these notes. Make sure I have all these notes. Let me just delete just to show you exactly the process I'm going through, I went through a little fast. So you click the first note that you want to for the lyrics to start, and you find in this sort of like three bars, if you go all the way down, there's a text bar. See, I have it already selected up here because I use text a lot. Um, I play in a lot of bands and I sing a lot and I write a lot of vocal music, so I always have text in there. Um, so I go to text and then this LA dash is for lyrics. So I click that and I write V and then space and then Y and then space and then C. So basically how how lyrics work in anything and and i cover this in one of my videos in the third video in my um playlist that i made on youtube i answer this like totally fully so please go visit that for um for questions about lyrics but that's sort of the basic thing is that you just go up here to text and then lyrics and then you input them but anytime you press a space it will move on to the next note even if that next note doesn't have a word of, like even if that note can't handle text like for example it's asking me right here to input text on this rest which i guess we could go like this Cool. But actually, I want to continue writing this piece. So I'm going to say that I want this to repeat over and over like a little VYC chant. And then, hmm, let's get a little more creative, right? This is, this is our time for creativity. I want to repeat all of this again because it was the coolest thing I've ever heard. So I'm going to click this first note, and then I'm going to click the last note all the way down here, so this selects all of these, all of these staves are selected. And I'm gonna press Command. And you can see all of them are selected because I kept pressing Shift and just clicking through all of them. And then I'm gonna click this first measure because it's always kind of reading things top down. Um, like if I were to press it here, it would not register because it would be like, you don't have enough staves but I'm going to press it up here because I know that it's reading top down and I'm gonna press Command V. That's not true. Okay, I guess we have to do this by hand. Sometimes note flight just gets angry with you and you just have to kind of work around it. Okay, cool. And then down, down, down. Bum, 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 bum. Cool, and there we go. 
All right, do we have any more questions? Now I have this piece kind of going. It has a cool little chant. I'm gonna change this voice to say VYC Note Pilots. Cool. So that means that it's all of us. Um, it means that all of us are singing at the same time. And I'm going to emphasize that more by writing my favorite thing to write in any score. I'm going to click on the first note. I'm going to go up here to text and performance text. And I'm going to write tutti, which means everyone sing at the same time or everyone do this thing at the same time. So this is a piece for a piano, a double bass, a trombone, and a guitar. So I guess John will play double bass. I'll play my Les Paul. Um, I don't know who plays trombone. I don't know, but we'll find a trombone player and piano player. Um, and then all of us get to sing this line. Cool, right? Now we have a singing line that all of us can do. If you also want to, in this piece, add another instrument in, um, ask me first. Just ask me first, just so it doesn't get out of hand. Okay, great question, Lucia. Uh, what are the key commands for accidentals? Cool, what if I wanted to make this, I don't wanna ruin this cool phrase, I really like it. So what if I wanted to start out with a long piano note and it was an F sharp? Cool, so I'm gonna make this a whole note. Whole note right here. And then anytime you want to find a key command, you just hover over whatever you want to do and it will show you, uh, I'm pointing to my screen and I realize you can't see it. Um, and then you see how it says sharp here and then a plus sign. Anything that's in the right hand corner, when you kind of hover over something, indicates that that's the key command for it. So if I have this note highlighted and I press a plus, oh, I press, I pressed an equals because I, um, because I didn't press shift, but, and I press sh a plus sign, it will do that for me. Super cool, key commands are the best. So you could just, if you wanted to make all of this sharp, you could just go through and press plus sign, plus sign, plus sign, and they all would become sharp. So key commands are the best. I'm just going to add to this. So as long as possible, which is also a fermata. Where are we gonna find that? See, I have to sometimes look around for things. It just takes a minute. Just poke around. Note flight won't hurt you. And if you really get into a mess, all you have to do is Command Z. There we go. Look, I found a fermata. It's under tempo. Fermata, and then also I found its key command over here. It's this um, little up carrot, um, which is if I press shift and six, we'll get that up carrot. So I'm gonna just try using the key command by pressing shift and six. And there we go, we got a fermata. Now, whatever you do in a key command is going to be affected only to the note highlighted in orange. So, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, if I were to highlight these two notes and press shift and up caret, which is a six, they would both get fermatas. I don't really want that because that would kind of change the phrase, but anytime you have anything in orange, whether it be one note or two note or 20 notes, it is, it's going to be affected by whatever key command or a button you press. We love Command C. See guys, this is, see, I'm hoping that this isn't as boring as some of your, on, your uh, online classes. I know online classes are such a drag, but we can have fun, especially when I'm doing the wacky crazy stuff and you guys are just having fun over there. Can I copy something from Logic into Note Flight? It is, um, that is something I really don't know how to do and um, I don't really use Logic. Um, I would ask Angelica about that, um, but uh, I feel like it would be really messy. Note Flight, 
Uh, Note Flight is like Siri before Siri got good. You know what I mean? It's like, no, it, it is intelligent. It understands a lot of things, but sometimes it just like doesn't understand what you're trying to say. You know, if I were to say like, hey Siri, do jacket. Oh, she listened to me. I'm gonna say, hey Alexa, don't have Alexa. If I were to say like, hey Alexa, what's the, do I need a raincoat today? Now Alexa's gonna be like, yes, there's a 30% chance of, or there's a 40, 50, 60% chance of raining. But a while back, she would have been like, I don't know what you're saying. And that that is my really weird metaphor of explaining why inputting from other sort of electronic sources don't really just communicate well with note flight. It's just like not as strong of a brain as we want it to be. And your brain is 1,000 times stronger than note flight and also I would suggest that logic is even smarter than note flight in some ways. So just understand that you're working with kind of like a very dumb Siri. Yeah. Aw, Lucia said this isn't boring. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay, any other questions? I'm here for another five minutes. Yeah. Okay, um, Larissa, I see what you're saying. On paper, sometimes you would leave one hand blank because the melody is continued in the next hand. I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but I'm going to say, like, try... I, I understand when you're writing something that it might be really helpful to leave something blank when your mind is sort of like... When you're like, oh, um, I know what's going to go here. This makes sense to me. It's it, like, I, under, I understand the reasoning behind doing something like that. But in note flight, it just doesn't really work because like I said, it's a really stupid Siri. Your brain is much smarter. Um, so just always get in the habit of kind of overwriting things almost, like giving too many directions. And then whoever's playing your piece can be like, this is way too many directions. Maybe take out a few it's always better to over explain what you want. But here's a really handy thing. I don't know if it exists in note flight, but this means kind of repeat the same thing. Uh, but you put it in a bar and you would only do it in a full bar of music to, um, let me even see if you can see this. Um, but this sort of shows like, if you were wanted a whole bar to repeat, it, you would just use this guy. Um, this is kind of like shorthand for composers. When you are writing a piece into note flight and ultimately going to give it to performers, you're going to want to write this out unless it's like 87 measures of the same thing, then they might want this. But just saying like, write it out. It's good practice. I hate to be a teacher about it, but I am a teacher. So, okay. Hi everyone. How is school? I don't go to school anymore, so um, so I guess it's um, fine because I don't go to school or get grades anymore. Which is fun. I was, um, honestly, I was like, not, I was fine at school. Like, I got good grades, but I wasn't like good at math or science or anything. I was just like, I just wanted to make and create stuff and... My school did not get that, and then I went to music school. Well, I went to college and did music, and then it was great. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you guys all so much. You are all the best. This is so much fun. You know, I'm gonna be here. I'm still uh, cranking out these note flight tutorials. Hey, actually, which reminds me to say, a lot of you asked questions that are easily answered by my like 10 minute tutorials that I. Uh, sent through Jessica Mays and you can also find on my YouTube page so I'm sure if you click around YouTube a little bit for my page you can find them just check in with them and make sure that when you're at like I mean ask as many questions as you want that's why I'm here I'm hanging out um, but just you know use those to help you out they're there to help you guys and uh, I didn't just do them because I wanted to but I'm probably gonna just keep um, 
doing these because I want to. Uh, if you have any ideas for things that you'd like me to do full tutorials on, I'd love to do them. I have a lot of fun making these. So, um, so if you have anything you really, really, really want to know in a, like a full formal tutorial, uh, just comment on this video or send me, um, you know, just send me an email uh, through through uh, Bridge or Jessica Mays or whatever. Um, happy to answer whatever. It's so fun for me. Please don't hesitate. No question is too boring or too stupid. I have, I like just, uh, you guys are so fun. So it's like, it's a treat. Um, so that's the first thing. If you really want a tutorial on anything specific, email me or Jessica Mays. I'll crank it out in no time. And then two, remember that I wrote this really cool piece for you guys and I want you all to continue it. So add a few phrases, don't get too greedy, you know, give your friends some space, but let's make this piece really cool and like, I don't know, maybe we can present it to uh, Jessica and John and, and Helica and Danny and it would brighten their days to find our really cool, crazy note flight collaborative piece. Uh, yeah. You guys are all great. I hope you have a great day. I hope you do something nice for yourself today, like take a bath or read a book or write a poem or write some music. And you do something nice for your parents because I'm sure that they're also super stressed. Um, and uh, happy composing. Keep, keep composing. It is fun. Like I hope that by me showing you that composing doesn't have to be serious. You don't have to write the most perfect thing every day. You don't have to be the next Mozart, you can just write crazy stuff and hear what it sounds like and have fun. So just uh, go out, have fun, happy composing, and I will see you soon. If I can figure out.